This is a topic that we're dealing with today. As we see, and we have an objective there. It's mainly the same thing, it's just to help us to, to understand. You know, as we go through the lesson, the objective is to help us to understand, indeed, that the Holy Spirit manifests Himself in us Amen. through various spiritual gifts. So when we, we look at spiritual gifts, we know that those spiritual gifts come from the Holy Spirit himself. Amen. And today we are so grateful because God has imputed in, in us his gifts. That's why we are here. That's why we are functioning. Everybody is blessed with one or two or three or even all the gifts and we are so privileged that we can ask you know we can pray and ask God to strengthen us and give us those gifts we, we, the Bible says that we do not have because we do not ask amen, amen. so could we just turn to the other thing please bless the Lord Okay, so the Holy Spirit manifests. So we want to look at the definition of manifest in a just a simple way. To manifest means to show or to demonstrate something clearly or plainly. You get that? Manifest, simple. Just mean to make to show something, to demonstrate something, making it clear, making it plain, so that we could see the demonstration, the manifestation, the clear illustration. Now let's go to the other spiritual gifts, as we know. There are special endowment or empowerment given by the Holy Spirit to the church. And we know that the church is the body of Christ. So we make up the church. We are the body of Christ. We are washed in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. We are saved. We are born again. We believe in Jesus. We accept him as our Lord, our Savior. Amen. So, this Holy Spirit, <coughs> these spiritual gifts are given to the body of Christ. It's given to us. And there is a purpose to fulfill God's, only God's purposes. To fulfill what God has us to fulfill here on this earth. So do you know we are purpose-filled people? Amen. So that's why it is important for us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. It is very beneficial for us to move on, to get deeper in God and seeking the baptism of the Holy Spirit in our lives. In other words, we should be walking in the Spirit every day, as Paul says, walk in the Spirit. So, that's how we live our Christian life. We cannot live it without the Holy Spirit abiding in us. And when Jesus left this earth, he sent his Holy Spirit. He says he's going to send it. He kept his promise. And he and his Holy Spirit, that each and every one of us will have the Holy Spirit abiding in us and enjoy his benefits, his fullness, and his promises he will never leave us. Okay, so the scripture that we're going to get into today, the main scripture is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And we're going to read from verses 1 to 11. And as we know, these scriptures are not, they are not new to us. We are familiar with them. 
you've been doing, we've been going, getting teaching from there, as everyone. Coming soon. Okay. We want to just refresh our minds and to see how much we can get today. So this portion is taken from the New King James Version. So if we could read kind of slowly, lowering our voice, and read slowly and lowly. Now concerning spiritual gifts. So look at this on the line. Spiritual gifts. Brethren, who is speaking to? Brethren. Paul is speaking to brethren. The, 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 what he is saying is directed to the brethren. Remember last week we did something with um, um, Paul um, was you know, something that we should be um, not be it, oh, we're going to that. And he was directing the words to the brethren. So, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I don't want you to be ignorant. So there again, it is mentioned. I do not want you to be ignorant. Okay. And we dealt with that same words, the same um, command the last time. I do not want you to be ignorant and to to be ignorant <laughs> means to be ill informed, not well informed, uneducated in certain areas, you know. And he says, Look, I do I want you all to know them. I want you all to be knowledgeable. And God wants his children to be knowledgeable. He wants us to know things. That is why we have to employ ourselves in the word of God. We need, that's why it is so important to delve into the word, to feed upon the word. This is our spiritual food. And that's how we get our knowledge with the help of the Holy Spirit. So he says, look, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles. You were, we were unsafe people. Amen. Carried away to these dumb idols. He was speaking to the Corinthian people and they were really deep into their idolatry. So he reminded them, look, you were, I, you were Gentiles. You were carried away to these dumb idols. However, you were led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a curse. You're speaking by the Spirit of God, you'll never curse Jesus. You never say Jesus is, is, is bad. And no one can say that Jesus is Lord except except by the Holy Spirit. Amen. So when you are saying and confessing Amen. that Jesus Christ is Lord, when you are confessing who Jesus is to you, when you are <coughs> confessing that I have received the Lord Jesus into my life, and if it wasn't for Jesus in my life or in my heart, what would have become of me today? When you are confessing Jesus in this way, when you are saying that he is Lord, it is only by the Holy Spirit. Amen. You think people who do not have the Holy Spirit in them, people who, don't, who are not led by the Holy Spirit, who don't have the Holy Spirit, who are not born again, who are not saved, they cannot say this, that Jesus Christ is Lord. You ever notice this? Yes. Right. So, you must, one must have the Holy Spirit in them, be led by the Holy Spirit for you to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Okay. So, the fourth verse says, we get it into the gifts now, that there are diversities of gifts. Diversity meaning different types of gifts, but the same Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that gives those gifts. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord, Jesus Christ is Lord, is the same Holy Spirit. 
and there are diversities of activities. Remember, um, we dealt with the Holy Spirit gives you talents before, and mm -hmm. we know we were born with those talents, you know, and uh, we're able to sing, we're able to speak, we're able to, it's in us, innate, in us. But the Holy Spirit giftings different. It's for those who are born again. All right? Those where who receive Christ, when, you rec when we receive Christ, we receive the Spirit of Christ in us. Amen. So, there are diversities of ministries, but the same Lord. There are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who walks all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one. To each one. So, are you left out? No. Okay. <coughs> For the profit of all. Profit, it means, when you hear about profit, it tells you that it's something good, beneficial. Something that is good in abundance. To profit. With all the um, King James Version says, for the profit of all of us. So when we come together with all the different spiritual gifts manifesting, oh, what a joy, and what a profit, what a gain. For to the one is given the word. Okay, so we're getting into it now. So look at those <coughs> that are highlighted in red, those gifts that are mentioned there. Right. So first one we see there is the word of wisdom through the spirit to so another the word of knowledge through the same spirit to another faith by the same spirit to another gifts of feelings by the same spirit to another the working of miracles to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues. So, I mean, it's a lot in this, and it would take so much time to get into good, or time is limited. To another, the interpretation of tongues, but one and the same spirit works all these things distributing to each one individually as he wills. Wow. Okay, so this is a scripture that deals with how many gifts mentioned there? How many spiritual gifts mentioned there? Nine. Nine. You have ever heard of the nine? The nine gifts or the ninefold gifts? Right. So this is what we're going to deal with today. So, next slide, please. Okay. Now, we look at candidates and you may wonder from time to time. Can we all have those gifts? Yes, I'm not sure. Everybody? Okay. How can you receive the gifts? Okay, as we read from first um, Corinthians 12 and verse 1, the Paul said, not want to be ignorant. So knowledge is necessary. If you don't know that those gifts don't exist, you wouldn't have any desire to receive them. You will hear vaguely about them and you wouldn't know if it's not for you. So that's why knowledge is important. So we need to be knowledgeable. We need to know what we have, what we are capable of having, what God has in store for us. All the blessings that God has are spiritual blessings. All we need to is to open ourselves up and receive them. So, the second point that I have is by receiving the promise. Because 
In Acts chapter 2, if somebody get it quickly and read it, I'll be so glad. In Acts chapter 2, and verse 38 and 39, two verses tells us, tell us something. There that there was a time that just blew my mind. What? Promises for me and my children and my children's children? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is unto you and to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Amen. Isn't that clear enough? Amen. We all acquainted, just write, uh, you know, highlight it in your Bible and go study it again. Acts chapter 2, it was on the day of Pentecost when the, the, the disciples received the power of the Holy Ghost, fell upon them, and they spoke in tongues, and so many people gathered, and they heard them, and Peter gave his sermon, and he told them, look, when people were asking me, oh, what can I do to be saved? You know, and this is a question that people should be asking us. That we have to show them what we have. Amen. And that they would be desire, they would desire what we have. And then we could get the opportunity to explain to them. And Peter was able to tell them that you need to repent. Turn away from your sins and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost because it is for everybody. It is for you, it is for your children, your generation. Amen. So when God makes a promise, He keeps it there. Amen. The promises are mine. So He can claim His promises. Say the promise is mine. Amen. The promises are yours. Yes. Okay, so that's number two point. Number three point, um, you could be candidates for a uh, divine revelation. Do you know that, you know, God re reveals things to his children? Yes. And we just have to be in the place, you know, everybody could get some divine revelation. Some people get through dreams, some get through visions, just simple vision. Some get it by prayer and fasting and seeking the Lord. So, according to Galatians 1, 7, 18, we, we can't go into all the scriptures now. But I think this, this talked about where Paul, when after he got converted, he, he went to this place where he received all his revelation from the Lord. So you could just write the scriptures, go, study. Matthew 16, 17 has something to do with that too. Um, so God, where you are, I think he was telling Peter there that flesh and blood didn't reveal it to him, but uh, it was the Spirit, it was the Lord who revealed those things to him. And that's when he confessed that, you know, Jesus, you are the Lord. So God can do all things sovereignly. Amen. Next thing is by the laying on of hands. So we have our pastor or prophets or evangelists or teachers or we again by ministerial offices, apostles. And you know, the apostles did a lot of laying on of hands on people, and they received the Holy Ghost, they received the gift. This is, this is happening today. It can happen again and again. God has not stopped. He has not ceased from functioning that way. He manifests right by the laying on of hands. So... We believe we need to believe we need to be knowledgeable right that I can receive the gift I can receive to receive the gift by the labor of hands that is why most times when people come up to the altar we come to pastor to pray for us and whatnot the next one is by desiring them so if you desire them 
you know, you know the gifts are there, they're functioning, they're healthy, they're good for us. So you pray, you desire. So as Paul says in those verses there, you know, covet, honestly, the best gift. And to desire spiritual gifts also in those scriptures they are mentioned. Meaning to excel in spiritual gifts, you have to go after them. We have to go after them. So the next one, quickly, we need to have the right motives. Because some people would want the spiritual gift for their own um, their own pain or their own um, selfish, you know, motive. It's like somebody in Acts, when he saw that by the laying of hands, people received the gift, and he decided, look, I wanted to, and he paid money to get it, and uh, he was rebuked, and uh, and uh, he was told, no, 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 this is not the right motive. We should have the right motive. We because the gifts are for God's purpose to edify the church. All right. So and to build up the church according to First Corinthians 14 and verse 12. So thank you. Now, as we read from 1 Corinthians 12, verses 1 to 11, concerning those spiritual gifts, we had five of them being mentioned. So, they are divided into three categories. First category, Revelation gifts. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge and the zoning of spirit. These are revelation gifts. Um, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, the zoning of spirit. We get into Lord of. The second is power gifts. Gifts of faith, gifts of healing, gifts of working of miracles. These are power gifts. And the third, the third category is inspirational gifts. Gifts of prophecy, gifts of tongues, gift, gift of prophecy, gift of tongues, gift of interpretation of tongues. And um, don't think as tongues are mentioned last in the portion that was written there. Let us not think that this is the least. Or they don't, they're not beneficial. Each one of the gifts are beneficial to the church. Right. So, we're going to get into it further on. Let us move up a little bit again. Right. So, a brief definition and functioning of the gifts here. First of all, the word of wisdom. And it's a revelation of the future, enabling you to know the next step forward, what you should say or do. It does not rely on your education or your IQ. Not because oh, I'm intelligent, I'm educated, I have my degree, so I could expatiate and say things. The holy, the gift of the Holy Spirit is the one who gives us this type of wisdom. Wisdom from an eye. Wisdom from God. Okay. Now, in Acts 27, verse 10 and 22, tells us the story about Paul when he was on his way and they were in a ship in, and there was a storm and they were in real jeopardy. But Paul was able to forecast a shipwreckage. 
So you're able to give it with a focus. Okay, there's a difference between focus and focus. You're able to take it focus and then and focus. When they were the, he was able to give the weather forecast and say, look, we want to have this storm. It's not going to see soon. We will really have a terrible time. But listen, listen, brothers, listen, men. Take courage. Do not be afraid. None of us are going to lose our lives. This was a word of wisdom. Okay? All right. So this is just one example. Because we have to move fast. Now the next one is a word of knowledge. A word of knowledge. It is a revelation of a fact that exists. The gift could refer to theological and biblical knowledge, but it may be understood as being a special word that a person needs urgently. You know, sometimes there are times you're in a position, you need a word from the Lord. And just a word from the Lord is so much. You don't have to get a whole sermon, you know, or a whole lecture. One little word, one short word, one phrase, one sentence, one directive from the Lord is enough for that time. A timely, relevant message from the Holy Spirit that assures one that God and not man has spoken. Whether it is pastor, the apostle, the teacher, the evangelist, or a brother or sister, speak a word. Once it gets into you, into your spirit, you have to recognize that word as coming from the Holy Spirit. It must, you have to say, it must be God. And give God thanks for that word. A word is so needful. A word from the Lord is so needful. Especially in these times when we are going through troubles, circumstances, situations in life. We need a word from the Lord. That is why we come to the house of God. You know, and when people come up, I know. I used to be so excited, even now, going to the house of God, and you're expecting a word from the Lord. Especially those times when I was going through certain things, you know, I'm going, opening up myself and expecting to receive a word from the Lord. And I didn't get there. So that's again, this, you know, desiring. So, it says, it is a timely message from the Holy Spirit that assures one that God and not man has spoken, according to John 1, 45, 50. This is my name. This word was operated in the ministry of Jesus. You know, Jesus operated in all the gifts, remember? He is... God's representative. He is God made flesh. He has everything. He had everything in him. He was 100% God, 100% man. And all the gifts were manifested in him. So he had that word of knowledge when he met Nathaniel. And you remember he told Nathaniel in John chapter. <laughs> Behold, an, inch, an, an Israelite indeed. Mm -hmm. It's a long story, yeah. but you could read it up. It was a word of knowledge. He knows everything. And just so God knows everything. We, we, may not, we will not know everything. But if we seek the Lord, we could know so much that He wants us to know. Okay, so if you just look into somebody and discern what is going on in there. You come to the one discerning of spirits. So it is one, the comprehension of the human spirit. 
is also uh, recognizing the demonic and also the genuine Holy Spirit. This most time, some people could misjudge somebody and say, mm -mm. you know, whereas it's not true, but we have to be, be 